Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Aditya Gupta, Junior Resident of uh, Radio Diagnosis at MJ Medical College, Kamote, Navi, Mumbai. The topic for my paper is Role of Triple Phase CT in Evaluation of Traumatic Pseudoaneurysms in Abdomen. Introduction A traumatic pseudoaneurysm is a localized pulsatile collection of blood that forms outside the arterial wall due to breach in the vessel structure. The blood accumulates within a fibrous capsule formed by surrounding tissues, creating a false aneurysm. Unlike a true aneurysm, which involves the expansion of all layers of the artery, a pseudoaneurysm results from a disruption that allows blood to escape from the vessel but is contained by the surrounding tissue. These pseudoaneurysms typically arise from the physical trauma such as blunt force injuries, penetration wounds or during medical procedures like catheterizations or surgical interventions. The injury causes a tear in the arterial wall and blood escapes into the surrounding tissue forming a pulsating mass. They can occur in various locations depending on the nature and site of trauma. The aim and objective of this paper is to understand the role of triple phase CT imaging to detect traumatic pseudoaneurysms in patients having history of severe abdominal trauma and injury. Material and methods are uh, the triple phase CT imaging was performed on patients with a positive fast scan in cases of abdominal trauma. A 34 year old male came to the casualty with history of road traffic accident. Fast scan was performed, which turned out to be positive. So there is a 5 into 5 mm sized avidly enhancing focal dilatation of subsegmental branch of the upper lobar artery of the right kidney which becomes isodense on delayed phase imaging suggestive of traumatic pseudoaneurysms. A wedge-shaped hypodense non-enhancing irregular area is also noted along the upper pole of right kidney suggestive of renal infarct or laceration. A non-enhancing hypodense collection of blood attenuation is also noted involving the perinephric space which suggests a perinephric hematoma. Next case, a 42 year old male came to the uh, casualty with history of road traffic accident. Fast scan was performed which turned out to be positive. In the following images, there is a 9 into 7 mm sized lobulated lesion in segment 3 slash 4b of left lobe of liver which shows intense enhancement on arterial and venous phase imaging which becomes isodense to the hepatic parenchyma on delayed phased imaging suggestive of traumatic intraparenchymal pseudoaneurysm. A 56-year-old male came to the casualty with history of road traffic accident. Fast scan was performed which turned out to be positive. In the following images, there is a 8 into 5 mm sized lobulated lesion noted in the mid portion of the spleen showing intense enhancement on arterial phase imaging. It tends to appear isodense to the splitting parenchyma on delayed phase imaging, the lesion appears to be in continuity with the distal branch of the splenic artery. Findings are likely suggestive of a traumatic intraparenchymal pseudoaneurysms. Another case, 51 year old male came to the casualty with history of assault. Fast scan was performed which turned out to be positive. In this case, there is a 1 by 1 cm sized lobulated lesion in the mid portion of spleen showing intense enhancement on arterial phase imaging which becomes isodense to splenic parenchyma on venous and delayed phase imaging. This lesion appears to be in continuity with the mid segmental branch of the splenic artery. Findings are likely suggestive of a traumatic intraparenchymal pseudoaneurysm. Moving on to the last case, there is a 55 year old female which came to the casualty with history of road traffic accident. Fast scan was performed which turned out to be positive. In this case, there are a few, few lobulated lesions in the mid and lower portion of spleen, largest of size measuring 1.6 into 1.3 cm, showing intense enhancement on arterial phase imaging which becomes isodense to the splitting parenchyma on delayed phased images. Findings are likely suggestive of a traumatic intraparenchymal pseudoaneurysm. The result 
Arterial contrast material extravasation is a high flow extravasation that appears in early arterial phase as an area of high attenuation, isodense to the adjacent arteries. A jet of contrast enhanced blood, a pool of contrast within a pseudo aneurysm or dependent layering of contrast can also occur. The CT differentiation of a contrast pseudo contained pseudo aneurysm from free extravasation is of particular importance. Since the latter, on delayed scans, free extravasation demonstrates continued increase in amount and density of extravasated contrast, whereas a pseudo aneurysm remains unchanged. Cases with severe abdominal injury and a positive fast scan should undergo a triple phase imaging to rule out pseudo aneurysm, as it indicates significant arterial bleeding and requires urgent angiographic embolization. Pseudo aneurysm scan rupture causing significant bleeding and potentially life threatening complications. Bacterial infections can occur in the collection of blood and surrounding tissue. They can cause nerve damage, leading to nerve damage, which can result, which can result in numbness, weakness, or paralysis. 